Hello, everyone. After after packet here, uh, we have another great speaker for you today. Uh, we have Alan with Fire Virus with a spreadsheet, and uh, we're very excited to have him. And with that, I will let Alan take it away. Thank you. Hey, um, yeah, I'm Alan Baranov. I'm from Melbourne, Australia. Um, today, I'll be taking you through a real life story that, that happened to me, um, mostly real life. Um, names and places have been changed to protect the innocent. <clears throat> um, what we'll do is we'll start at the successful end um, and we'll re rewind a couple of months back uh, to see exactly what steps uh, were taken by me and my team uh, to ensure that everything worked out okay. Um, yeah, whole thing will be done in Excel because that's what we're on about. A bit about me. Um, so I started off as a technical person about 20 years ago, um, worked my way through firewalls and um, other kind of technical security controls and am now a GIC consultant. Uh, so yeah, that's where I am, and who knows where the future will be. Um, if you want to reach out to me, I'm A. Baranov or Alan Baranov on most uh, uh, social media. And yeah, let's take it away. All right, so on this slide, um, one of my friends who works in a blue team environment said, um, let's definitely put a warning here because some of the stuff that we were about to talk about can be quite scary for blue team blue teamers. So, uh, yeah, Tuesday, the 27th of June, 2017, um, I arrive into work and, uh, yeah, my, my boss, Trevor, was, was waiting for me. Um, he was sipping on a milkshake, um, which was a bad sign for me because when he does that, that uh, means that it's going to be an interesting day. Um, and he said that he just wanted to get clo uh, in before... Um, the big people came to speak to me. So essentially the CIO and what they called the security board came in and said that they wanted to speak to me. I'm like, okay, um, I'm not sure what's going on, but okay. Um, they took me into a meeting and they told me that there was something called MS17-010 um, and that it had been used. Uh, we didn't know what it was called just yet, but it's now now we, it's got a name called NotPetya. Um, it had taken down many of the Australian businesses and businesses around the world, like Maersk and Merck, um, and they were worried about our infrastructure, um, and they were worried that that we were going to be brought down. Um, and uh, so, could I actually get involved and, and and help them out with that? So, yeah, that's that's all good. Um, and so, uh, what actually happened in that was. Um, I went back to them and I said, listen, we've got no problems um, because we're fully patched. And they were like, unbelievable. They didn't believe me. Um, and I said, okay, that's fine. No problem. I've got all the information in spreadsheets. I can show you how we've tracked uh, the patching that we've done over time. Um, and they were a bit impressed, but they were also a bit disappointed because I think they actually wanted to put up a bit of a fight against this, uh, against this piece of malware. But anyway, um, we were successful and so now i want to take you back through through the bit of the history before this um as to how we got to this point and i could actually say yeah all good we, that virus is not going to come anywhere close to us all right so um yeah while i was working there um my, my manager um he, he came out with this idea that he wanted big monitors um and he wanted us to look like nasa and well Yes, we had pew pew maps and, and all of that on there, but he also wanted to to put some other information up there. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, he, he got me to do that. Um, and and I actually coined the, the phrase security through big monitors, and I Googled this, and there, there were no search re, um, results that came out for that. Uh, so basically, I think I invented the term. So if anyone wants to use it, you're welcome. You just need to pay me royalties. Um, so. The first thing I decided that we'll do um, is put up some traffic lights because anytime you have a manager and they want information, traffic light, all the things, um, of course, because uh, bosses like to, to be given pretty pictures to look at. So what we did, yep, we came out and did uh, a graph where we took all the patches, all the servers, um, sorry, all the patches, divided them by all the servers, and of course got a lovely diagram 
Um, some months we had more than 90% of patches applied. Some months we had uh, less than that. Um, and so we tracked against the, the stats there. And of course, because we're using traffic lights, uh, you always want to make sure that you're in the yellow, um, just basically because if you're in the red, that means you're not doing your job. And if, it, if you're in the green, it means that you've got way too much budget. Um, so that's, you got to keep it in the yellow, which is a bit strange because essentially what, what you're looking at now, um, you know, if Microsoft release a lot of patches, you'll probably go into the yellow. If they don't release a lot of patches, you'll go into the green. If they release a lot, a lot of patches, then you might hit the red. Um, so you're tracking Microsoft and that doesn't really help you. Um, it doesn't give you any direction of where to go. Um, but some of the stuff that we were looking at at this time uh, to try and improve the whole process is, um, is it really the total number of patches? Uh, did we get them all right? Um, is it approved patches? Are there other servers that we could be looking at, et cetera? Um, so that was that. Um, and then the other thing that's, so, so then what I did was I thought, okay, well, let's enhance it. Let's see if we can actually dig into the information a bit deeper. Uh, so you'll see I've taken this kind of list of computers, uh, total patches, installed patches, all in all, we came out 93.6%, um, which is good, which is great, which gets us in the green. But if you have a look at the actual computers themselves, um, you'll see that there's some issues here. So some of them are below uh, what we're supposed to be um, having. Um, some of them are, are good. Uh, most of them are good. Uh, but there's one you'll see even uh, is 76.5%. That, that may or never have received any patches uh, in the lifetime of that server at all. Um, so it's good to do that uh, because, of course, it gives us uh, direction. Um, let me just go back to that one. Uh, so it gives us direction um, as to where to go. So we can see, oh, hang on, most of these are okay. We can just leave them. They seem to be updating. Um, everything's fine. The two that aren't, uh, we can fix that out. That, that might be just a, you know, one month that just didn't quite work out properly. Maybe they just need to be rebooted. Who knows? Um, so you can sort those, and then the one that that has is getting no patches at all. That's the one where where you're going to want to concentrate um, and get get everything sorted out. Um, yeah. So I, I mean, I, I can talk about an hour on each one of these uh, kind of slides, uh, but but unfortunately I can't. But if anyone wants to catch me on on the um, Discord, uh, yeah, I'm I'm available there. Or if you want to drop me a tweet, whatever, we can talk further. But essentially, um, the reason why I put this in here is, you know, once once you've sorted out stuff, if you see that stuff is recurring, um, then you, you can do you can check against it and and see why it's happening and just keep on working through it. And over time, what you'll find is that you're actually improving, and that's a good thing. So you're no longer tracking whether Microsoft has released too many patches for you to to patch or not. What you're actually tracking now is how well are you doing um, and how well are you getting patched? Okay, so what I just wanted to point out at this point um, is that a many, many to relationship is actually a, a very difficult uh, thing to, to get right. So, um, we, and, and we have one in, in this particular case. So what we're looking at here is we have multiple servers we have multiple patches, and if you have a case like that, then you need to start working out because it's too much information um, to 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 try and work with all at once. So you, you kind of summarize it down to okay, what? How many servers do we have? Okay, these are the servers. Okay, and then what patches are there? But you can get more in, interesting information uh, once you start looking at the patches. So you can have a look at whether they're a high, medium, or low risk patch, um, and maybe you have different rules for each of those. So now you're starting to get into understanding the information at an even higher level. And also you can start looking at the actual ages of, of, the, of the patches. So what you might do is you might say, okay, well, we haven't actually patched uh, these patches here, but we're not expecting to, because they only came out this month and we just haven't had time to test them. We haven't had time to apply them, um, and they're not critical that we need to do it immediately. Uh, so that's okay um, that they haven't been patched. All good. Um, you might find, have some that are one month out, um, and that's a problem because they haven't gone through 
but at least you know that. And the next time you patch, okay, well then that's fine. We'll patch them that time. Um, you might then have a process, uh, you might have it where the process has failed um, twice. And now you're gonna have a bit of a problem. Why is your process not working? That's, that's a bit of an issue. Um, and then of course, if it fails three times, then hang on a sec. Okay, now we have a huge issue because we've looked at it three times and we still haven't been able to work it out. Hopefully something is, is being worked out to, to, to get that sorted eventually. And now that you have these, that information, you have meaningful information that you can graph and you can go back to doing the, the, the red, the yellow and the green like a guy on a flag. Um, and it actually means something because what you can say is like, hang on a sec, where you see red is where our processes are failing. And we can actually start to, to work on that. And you can bring that down over time. All right, but wait. What about MS17010 from the beginning of our discussion? So MS7, so, so what we were doing at, you know, before this point was we were actually trying to to patch all the different uh, servers over time. We weren't looking at the patches really, we were just looking at the servers and trying to to patch server by server. And now all of a sudden you have this really bad uh, uh, vulnerability. Uh, it, it can be remotely uh, at, attacked. Um, and yeah, it's just, of a, a very very bad vulnerability it, it came out bad and then of course um one of the things that 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 uh, joshua coleman came out with um is uh, something called hd moore's law um which is uh, it, it's basically a pun on, on moore's law um and essentially what it is 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 as virus well as as vulnerabilities um get easier and easier to exploit they become more and more dangerous um, and so what happened with this one is it slowly, I, I noticed that it exploits were being built, um, theoretical exploits and real exploits then metasploits. Um, and then I, I saw that and I thought, oh, okay, this thing is going to become a worm in the not too distant future. So going back into the slide here. As I said, many-to-many -many relationships are not good because they bring in complexity, but sometimes they are good because now we can actually pivot and we can say, okay, well, we were looking at servers and how many patches we had running on the different servers. Now we can actually go back and we can say, okay, well, now let's look at this one single patch and how many servers um, have this patch installed on it. And so if we bring it, if we work out that, that information, then we can see, okay, well, these servers, A, B, C, E, G, A, and H, I have the patch installed. And then these three computers have the patch, uh, the patch missing. Now, remember, we are also using, so, so the reason why we've got so many com uh, computers that actually have it patched is because we were going through the computers and, and we will attack uh, the critical patches while we're doing it. Um, and also at the same time, we were looking for computers that were missing. Um, so we actually managed to get all the computers and we got them mostly patched. And then, hang on, these three, uh, for some reason, just don't have this one single patch. Um, and it could be that they're new computers, they just haven't had patches applied at all ever. Um, and so therefore, boom, we can just basically apply the patch. And so that's that's what we did. Um, and that's why we were successful. So essentially, we, we built the, the information over time and got to this point, and then we managed to flip it and managed to to change our processes. So there's a couple of takeaways. Well, there's more than a couple of takeaways. There's a few takeaways that I'd like to 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 show you here. Um, number one, get information. There's always information out there. Um, the information I got directly from the Microsoft guys, they just basically pulled it out um, and sent it my way. Raw information, stick it into Excel. Um, and then number two, play with it, manipulate it, move it around, experiment, um, keep changing it. It's low risk. The, you, you have no issue with, with uh, you know, playing around with information. It's all in your spreadsheets. It's all good. Um, number three, use it to improve things. Try and say, okay, well, hang on a sec. Our processes need to be improved or not. Do we know or don't we know? And then, of course, 
get the information that will tell you exactly what you need to know um, whether your processes are working or not. Always ask why. Don't just fix stuff. Work out why was it broken in the first place? Because if it happens again, uh, you'll know and you'll be able to work uh, to fix it up. Also, just note that you don't need expensive tools. We have Excel, um, and that's all I used. So basically, that that was. Um, I didn't have to go out and, and buy anything, any you know special tools or anything. I had it already. All I needed was the information and some of my time to get it working. WSUS was there, Excel was free. Um, yeah, um, okay, yeah. So doing security right is hard. There's no easy wins. Um, so it looks easy uh, from what I've shown you here, but there was a lot of hard work behind the scenes. Once I got the information in place, sitting with the IT team, um, and getting them to to patch and repatch and repatch and get it right and research and find out what was going wrong. Um, there there was a lot of work. The the one thing that that I could point out at this at, at this point now is that having that 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 extra good information that I could give to them made them more excited about the job that they were doing. It wasn't me just coming as a security person and saying, listen, you need to patch your servers because patching servers is a good thing to do. It was me coming to them and saying, hey, this computer, it doesn't seem to be working, doesn't seem to be getting its patches. Um, can you work out why that is? And then they come back to me and say, listen, this is the story and we can actually sort it out and fix it. So that's what comes out of having the the information it makes life a lot easier for, uh, for you and for your IT team. And yeah, as I said, work with your teams. Um, it, yeah, you can say, okay, well, if you're asking why, can you help them? Um, a lot of times they would come back to me and say, listen, I have no idea why this isn't working. And we dig in the history and we can see, okay, well, it, it patches sometimes, sometimes not. There must be something strange with that box or it's never been patched before. And then you can work out stuff like that. Maybe there's a firewall in, in the way, et cetera, et cetera. Keep digging deeper. Um, so as I showed you, the first things we were monitoring were just like the total number of patches across everything divided by the total number of computers. And it didn't really tell us very much. It didn't give us a good deep inf um, amount of information that we could work with. Um, and usually that information's there. You're just not looking at it. So always keep getting more information. And don't be scared to get information from two different places. Um, like, for instance, what I was saying earlier is, is you want to, we had all the computers that we knew about. Uh, but when I found um, some other lists of computers, those were different. And then the question is, well, why are they different? Um, and then that helps you to, to actually get uh, a, a more, um, a, a bigger understanding of 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 your total um, the the total issue that you need to deal with. And number ten, don't be scared to change your process. So we had a good process. We were getting we were making um, you know making leeway against what we had to do. So um, sorry, making headway against what we were trying to do. So we were getting our servers uh, patched, and we were getting more servers patched, and the lines were coming down because less and less critical patches were. We're missing less and less non-critical patches we're missing. But then when all of a sudden I saw that there was one patch that was really, really important that we really needed to get out the way, changed everything. Okay, this is the one. This is what we need to sort out first. Everything else needs to take us, um, you know, as, uh, we, we, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to it eventually. But this is what we need to get right now. And yeah, next steps. So, so if you're interested in this, um, the next steps for you would be get your information, go find where you can get it from, get C CSVs, get some JSON, get text, um, and convert it, put it all into to Excel, start fiddling with it, learn how to join so the sources together, learn how to use pivot tables, learn how to use graphs, and play, and play and play until you get the information that you need. Um, just, yeah. You're a hacker, so so use your your hacking ability to to work with uh, work with Excel, and that's pretty much it. Um, just a shout out to the my Baronov clan, um, and to uh, the uh, DefCon group of Melbourne. Um, hey guys, uh, also to the Australian B sides team, B sides Canberra, B sides Melbourne. Um, 
And yeah, to all of you that are there uh, taking your time out to, to watch this presentation, thank you very much for that. And thank you very much to the DEF CON team and to the Blue Team Village uh, for having me. Um, it's a great honor to, to be able to speak uh, in, in, in this uh, forum. And yeah, if there's anyone that, that does have any questions, I'm not sure, uh, there might be a bit of time left. Uh, alternatively, just find me in um, either the DEF CON, um, the, the DEF CON Discord, or alternatively in the Blue Team Village Discord. And yeah, I'll answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much. Awesome, thank you for the wonderful presentation, Alan. Um, as always, uh, we suggest that you join the Blue Team Village Discord and mm -hmm. direct your questions to text talk track one okay and, um, i will do for sure the presenter will take a look and uh be able to answer your questions and other than other than that i uh, appreciate that and thank you again thank you